Good morning. I got to say it. I can't wait. The Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. Oh, thank you. Now I'm good. <laughs> if you would like to join me this morning for my scripture, our scripture reading, I'm going to be reading from Acts. In your pew Bible, I will be reading from page 173. Peter began to speak. I now realize that it is true that God treats everyone on the same basis. Those who fear him and do what is right are acceptable to him no matter what race they belong to. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, proclaiming the good news of peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. You know of the great event that took place throughout the land of Israel, beginning in Galilee, after John preached his message of baptism. You know about Jesus of Nazareth and how God poured out on him the Holy Spirit and the power. He went everywhere, doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses of everything that he did in the land of Israel and in Jerusalem. Then they put him to death by nailing him to the cross. But God raised him from death three days later and caused him to appear, not to everyone, but only to the witnesses that God had already chosen. That is, to us who ate and drank with him after he rose from death. And he commanded us to preach the gospel to the people and to testify that he is the one whom God had appointed judging of the living and the dead. All the prophets spoke about him, saying that all who believe in him will have their sins forgiven through the power of his name.
testimony of John. Early on Sunday morning, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been taken away from the entrance. She went running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, whom Jesus loved, and told them, they've taken the Lord from the tomb and we don't know where they have put him. Then Peter and the other disciple went to the tomb. The two of them were running, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and saw the linen cloths, but he did not go in. Behind him came Simon Peter, and he went straight into the tomb. He saw the linen cloths lying there, and the cloth which had been around Jesus' head. It was not lying with the linen cloths, but was rolled up by itself. Then the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went in. He saw and believed. They still did not understand the scripture which said that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back home. Mary stood crying outside the tomb. While she was still crying, she bent over and looked in the tomb and saw two angels there dressed in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been, one at the head and the other at the feet. Woman, why are you crying? They asked her. She answered, They've taken my Lord away, and I do not know where they have put him. Then she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Woman, why are you crying? Jesus asked her. Who is it that you are looking for? She thought he was the gardener, so she said to him, If you took him away, sir, please tell me where you have put him, and I will go and get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward him and said in Hebrew, Rabboni, this means teacher. Do not hold on to me, Jesus told her, because I have not yet gone back up to the Father, but go to my brothers and tell them that I am returning to him who is my father and their father, my God and their God. So Mary Magdalene went and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and related to them what he had told her. Here ends the reading from the Gospel of our Lord. We have read you from the Word of God. May he add his blessing to the reading. On Good Friday, when we left this place, the tomb was sealed. It was closed by a stone. Jesus was dead. There was no denying it. Mary Magdalene, who had been witness at the crucifixion, the one mentioned in all four Gospels as being there, had saw Jesus die. There was no denying it, because death cannot be denied. Early the morning, the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene, as John tells it, returns to the tomb, fully expecting to find it still sealed. She travels there just before the sun comes above the horizon, you know that kind of twilight sort of time when there's enough light to see, but really not very much light yet. She travels there by herself. We don't know why. John doesn't tell us, but it's likely that as tradition dictated, she was going there to mourn. For seven days after a loved one died, they would go to the, ten, to the tomb of the loved one, the burial spot, and they would, they would lament, they would cry, they would grieve deeply. So it's likely that's what she was doing. Going by herself, perhaps she expected to meet the others there. Again, John doesn't tell us this. But Mary Magdalene is selected by John to be the witness. The witness of the crucifixion, as well as the witness of the life of Jesus, but the witness of the crucifixion, and now she's to be the first to witness the miracle of resurrection. Why Mary Magdalene? We don't know. But she had been there. She had been a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Some believe that she was one of the principal financiers of the mission of Jesus, that she brought funds and support to the whole group along with some of the other women. But she is the one who's there. And when she gets there in that half light, 
she sees the stone has been moved away. What is she to think of that? He was dead. Where's the body? Where it's, what's happened here? What's taken place? And so she runs to get help. Isn't that what you would do? Isn't that about the most human reaction to finding something so out of the ordinary, so unexpected, that you go to get help or to tell someone? And that's what she did. She went to find the disciples who were locked away somewhere. She knew where to find them. They'd hope nobody else did because they feared the officials that they would be next to be arrested and crucified. But she finds them. She knocks on the door and she tells them, the tomb has been opened. The tomb has been opened. Peter and an unnamed disciple, tradition has said it is John, run to the tomb to see for themselves, not to see if resurrection has happened. You see, dead is dead. They expected as everyone else, that Jesus would still be safely tucked away in his tomb, no longer a threat to anyone. They run there, and they see that not only is the tomb open, but the body is gone, as Mary had reported. It says that the disciple Jesus loved, the unknown disciple, looks into the tomb and, and then believes. What he believes is that Mary's story is true. Not that he believes in the resurrection. That doesn't come to later in John's gospel. Peter and this disciple go back to the place where they were staying. Mary stays by the tomb and weeps. She's not only now grieving the loss of a loved one, she's also grieving the abuse of him even after his death. Where had they taken him? What had they done with the body? They're denying them their grief in what they have done, whoever they were. As she's there crying, she looks in the tomb once again, and now she sees two individuals dressed in white, one on the left and one on the right of where they would have laid Jesus. What are they doing there? Are these the people who took him? And they speak to her. John tells us they're angels. Mary gives no recognition that they're angels, but John says they are. And they speak to her and they say, why are you weeping? What a foolish question to ask somebody. Why are you weeping? Who wouldn't be? He's not here, they tell her. He's gone. He's risen. Now, she backs out of the tomb, as we can expect. Now, I don't know if you've ever been in a circumstance where you're suddenly shocked, where something has is, is happened that is just absolutely floors you, maybe a message on the phone that tells you something terrible has happened or something wonderful has happened, whatever it is, there is a time of kind of disconnect where you're really not sure what to do. You, you can't really logically process all of this and imagine Mary Magdalene who only a few days before saw Jesus die and she was there, she saw it. She saw the spear enter his side. They, she saw the dead body taken down. She saw the, the dead body interred in the, in the tomb. She saw, she was a witness to all of this. And now she's told, he is risen. He's not here. She stumbles back, turns around, and encounters somebody. Now this is, John tells us, a tomb that was placed in a garden. She thinks it's the gardener come to do his early morning chores. And she thinks that maybe he's the one. Did you take him? If you took him, no one's going to be angry. We, nothing will happen. I just want to go and, and find him and, and bring him and give him burial. She doesn't recognize him. Now, John already tells us who he is. I almost wish he hadn't. Because it's in the speaking of the word, her name that she sees Jesus and recognizes him. Mary, 
Jesus said. And immediately, she knows who it is that's speaking to her. Because you see, our names matter, don't they? Our names identify us. It's who we are. Mary. And she responds, Rabboni, teacher. Undoubtedly, the term that they had used for him as they traveled with him all of those years, he was their teacher, their mentor. And when he tells her what she is to do, she recognizes him then as the Lord because what she's supposed to do, she has a mission. Now she knows what to do. He says, go and tell my brothers that I'm going to meet them in the place in Galilee. They know where. Go and tell them I am going to the Father soon. And I am coming to them soon. Go and tell them. And then she takes off at a run. Now, she's the one that's running. Notice this. This is a a twist in the story John's telling. She's now running. She now has the news. She now has the answer. She runs to the door where the disciples are. Now, you can imagine their state of their minds. Peter has come back. The other disciple, they've taken the body. They disturbed the tomb. I can imagine they're angry. If they're like most guys, they're probably planning on revenge. How are we going to get back at them? How are we going to make this right? What are we going to do next? Mary comes beating at the door, and this time I can imagine with a whole lot more passion. And when they open the door, she says, The Lord, I've seen him. I have seen him the Lord. That's where John ends that part of the story. I encourage you to read the rest. I want to look at that for just a minute because it seems to me, as I read that, that the reaction to the resurrection is not so different than it is today. We hear he is risen, right? We hear the tomb is empty. We did a little drama to try to help you be merry a little bit today. We hear that, and how do we react to it? Some people will go so far as to maybe come to this kind of place and imagine for a minute that the tomb is empty. Something happened that day. Undoubtedly, something happened. 2,000 years later, we're still talking about it. Something happened that day. But what? Sometimes that's as far as people get. Something happened. Others go a little deeper, I think. Others actually investigate a little deeper and maybe go a little deeper in and, and, and see the body is gone and, and say, well, something definitely, Jesus did something there. Something happened to him. He's, it, the body's not there. Maybe he is risen. Maybe is about as far as they get. That's pretty common, I think. And then there are those, I think, like Mary, that stay with it. In the midst of their doubts and their uncertainties and their knowledge that dead is dead. And stick with it a little longer and and struggle with that tension of Believing in something that seems so impossible. Some struggle with that and are rewarded with something. God speaks to their hearts and says, indeed, he is risen. And in their hearts, they see the Lord. They recognize the truth of it. It no longer is a a matter of reason or what fits with our narrative of how things go in life. Those things are set aside and instead replaced with a sense of certainty that not only is the tomb empty, but indeed he does live. And in my heart, in my mind, I have seen him. And what did they do with that knowledge? What did Mary do with that knowledge as soon as it became to her evident And she saw the Lord. What did she do? She went 
to tell someone about it because it was such important news that the entire world needed to hear it. And it was going to begin with her and it was going to go to those who had witnessed things as well that Jesus had done. And it was going to spread from there in that place in Jerusalem throughout Judea, Israel, Samaria, Rome, and ultimately the world. That's why we're here this morning. If Mary Magdalene had slept in, if she decided to wait and do it the safe way, if she had not stuck with it and stood against her doubts and her uncertainties and the fact that the world doesn't work like that, dead is dead. We all know it. If she had stayed with those kinds of constructs, constructs of thinking, if she'd have stayed with that, do you know what she would have missed? Those most amazing announcement that has ever been made in the entire history of the universe. He's not there. He is risen. And as he said, on the last night that he spent with his disciples before the Garden of Gethsemane experience, when they were sitting around the table, he said the most important message that became the Christian message to this very day of why all this matters. He said, because I live, you too shall live. He is risen. Alleluia. He is risen indeed. Amen.